The big challenge of Frankenstein, for me, it was not having any music. That's how I get the images and where the, the pivotal points in a piece can come. But the payoff, of course, is that you can then say, hang about, I need another four minutes there because there's a whopping great set change, or I need this to be ten times louder because I wanted to cover stage noise. And the composer is, is with us still and can work with you and do that. If you're working with a contemporary choreographer, albeit working in the classical mold, like Liam, Liam is capable of shredding a costume at its first rehearsal. But he still wants somebody to look like a real person. He wants somebody to look as if they're in 1860, or in the case of Frankenstein, 1790. But he still wants for them to be able to get up and do the most extraordinary things. Liam arrived with a very, very clear synopsis. And basically our starting point was just to lay out the three acts. So you have then a very solid structure. The major idea in Act One, which is kind of easy to come up with, was an anatomy room, because it is a wonderful teaching space, and it's also a spectacular theatrical space, a curved white tiled room for him to create the creature in. There's a, a landscape frame to the stage which stays for the whole evening. And Liam was anxious to have very much the front of the Frankenstein house as the main object in Act Two. I wanted there to be a massive set change and go to the city for the lynching. And I did build it, and then Liam said to me, well, actually, you do realize it's only a two-minute scene. The two of us had many ideas for Act Three, which, of course, is the ballroom scene. In the end, all I'll say is it's a very simple solution. And we kept, in the end, coming back to something so simple. 